Hey everybody, it's Ricky Rackman. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And remember, please subscribe. Just hit the subscribe button, it's right there. Maybe it's right there. Maybe it's there, maybe it's... I don't know how the YouTubers do it. They have all the flashy graphics and everything. I don't know where that subscribe button is, but just do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. On this channel, my goal is to show you all these videos that I found about the Headbangers Ball and tell you some behind the scenes stories about those episodes. That's coming up really soon. But while I was looking for the videos, I found this video called Video Cat House. This was shot in 1991 by Delilah Films and it was used as a sizzle reel for either a network or a production company to make a documentary about me and the cat house, which of course never happened. But this video is pretty cool. Uh, it was filmed at the fifth anniversary. Part of it's at the Hollywood Palladium, the other part is at the cat house. And you'll see Ice T in this, you'll see Megadeth in this. Who knows who you will see in this? Uh, you'll see Tracy Lords is one of the first people that you'll see in it. And interestingly enough, if you look at Wikipedia or those Who's Dating Who websites, they're always listed as me dating Tracy Lords. I never dated her. As a matter of fact, the longest conversation we ever had was probably the 10 seconds that you're gonna see at the starting of this video. But it's funny because it shows, you know, a little bit behind the scenes. The Cat House was always called the raunchiest club in rock and roll. Of course, listen to the Cat House Hollywood podcast if you wanna hear some of those decadent stories. But I'm gonna stop talking right now, which I know is gonna please you very much. Here is Video Cat House. I want you to tell me what you think one more time. This is skin of my team. I wanted fast cars and nice furniture and something to eat. <laughs> so instead of just being a struggling rock star, I said, I'll be a struggling rock star for a while, but I'll be a businessman at the same time. And I, I still have this stupid fixation that one day I'm going to be a rock star, but it doesn't look like it. <laughs> Maybe a lounge act. Do you play No. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a singer, and that, that's like really complimenting myself by calling myself a singer. I think we met once. Uh, we were at a lonely guy's. Christmas uh, Christmas dinner. It was at Nikki Six's house, and it was a bunch of us, and nobody had girlfriends. And so it was like all these guys together at Christmas. And I met Ricky, and we just got along really great. He's got a uh, very hard job to do because all the all the all the uh, the groups don't necessarily get along with each other. You know what I'm saying? You got people that don't really you know get along with each other. So Ricky has to be friends to everybody because he has to interview everybody, you know. So a lot of times I've seen him on TV talk to one group and they'll look at him like, hey, well, you know, don't talk to me, you know, because he did an interview with another group. So I know he has to be very non-biased. Backstage at the Cat House five-year anniversary. I'm Ricky Rackman with Ice T. And you've seen me wearing his shirts tons of times. Now he's at my party. When he tells us he likes us, I know it comes from his heart. I know he doesn't really have to do that. You know, he could just say, yeah, you want to play, I'll see if I can get around to it. So I really feel he's a good guy, you know. And uh, 
I think he's doing a lot for cool rock, especially on the L.A. scene. Oh, yeah, well, I was the last keyboardist, and, you know, they threw yeah. out the band, and a lot of people were wondering what happened to the keyboardist in Megadeth. What happened to the keyboardist in Megadeth? We, we, we decided to go back to music. We've been together after 15 years. <laughs> I think there was a need for it. Our last decided, show was when we were 15 years old, fucking this band. We decided to go back to basics. Yeah. This next record's going to be the heaviest one yet. <laughs> Ricky is a guy that, you know, you go up, you play, it's always fun. The stuff that Ricky does is always fun. It's a great thing to do. The truth? The truth. Uh, Ricky's a nice guy. <coughs> I like Ricky. He's my friend. Believe it or not, that's the truth. We wouldn't have played for free for this motherfucker if it wouldn't have been that. Uh, that's my friend. Ricky, no, we don't like Ricky. You don't like Ricky? Yeah. What, what do you he do doesn't have anything interesting to ever say anyway. How did Ricky know? Probably because this was last year. What you did? This has been wild, crazy. Ricky! 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 It's great. This is the real place. This is the cat house. As you can tell, madness outside, decadence inside. You're just gonna have to go in and just kind of see yourself. I mean, I'm not really off into the glam scene. You know what I'm saying? I mean, to be honest, uh, we we wanted to play a lot of West Hollywood clubs. They banned my group. We can't play any groups in West Hollywood. We want to play the Troubadour. They said that. Under no circumstances would my group ever play there. You know, I like more aggressive stuff. And um, when, we, when we got body count out here on the, on, the, on, the, on the L.A. scene, Ricky definitely stepped to us and said, anytime I got a gig, you can play. And we played for him at the Cat House. There's millions of girls here. It depends on if they want to go home with them or not. Well, there's a lot of chicks and a lot of dudes, and it's like a big, rad, awesome time. To put it in a few words. On top of the beer, some, some women. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Man, you know, it's like girls who go to the cat house are, are mostly bisexual and wear lingerie. And uh, I kind of, I, I uh, wish I would have discovered it sooner when I was single. I don't know, it's, it's, we've been there a few times. To the cat house. Yeah. I don't really remember what we did there. I know where all the bathrooms are, though. I think it's like sort of burdens. Cat House is from Ernest's place, like in uh, Hollywood, <laughs> Hollywood history, right? Yeah, 1, Okay. <laughs> All right. Where'd you come up with Cat House for the name of your club? At that time, my roommate was in Faster Pussycat. And the whole idea was something that was fun, something that was decadent. A lot of people don't know what a cat house is. A cat house is a whorehouse. Basically, the whole premise of the club was all the bands in L.A. were just starting off at that time. And we wanted a place that we could all go and hang out, that we wouldn't get thrown out, that we didn't have to pay for drinks, and we couldn't meet girls. I mean, that's basically the, the stupid, immature reason that we opened up the club. There was one person that we were sitting fucked up five years ago in this hotel room. He goes, dude, let's see if we can do a club to meet, strip, to meet strippers to get free drinks and have our friends hang out. And he was my roommate, and he's in this next band that's gonna be playing. Faster Pussycat! <laughs> Started, it was Guns N' Roses, L.A. Guns, all those bands in that record deals. They had Jane's Addiction. You know, they were all just, they were friends. I mean, especially, you know, with Guns N' Roses and Faster Pusquet. It gave them a place to go and to do whatever they wanted and to dance and to hang out. And that was the place that we all met every Tuesday and talked about all the changes. Follow. 
Swallow. He's on the back of the alumni's vest. That's Swallow. Rollo is, uh, his name last name is Pearson or something like that. But Rollo is like the cat house mascot. He doesn't exist, but he sort of exists. He's like the god of the cat house, the guy that overlooks the cat house. If there's a straight rock and roller, heterosexual rock and roller against AIDS, it's going to scare a lot of rock and rollers. But rock and roll, you know, it's always been sex, drugs, rock and roll. Well, drugs is killing people, obviously. Everybody knows that. Sex is starting to kill people. That's yeah, blank so. and rock and roll. I used to bone my girlfriend years ago, so that was... Did that you was know that? Oh, yeah. I used to bone Which one? Girlfriend. No, I know you're... No, I won't say <laughs> that. <laughs> we <laughs> <laughs> Which we girl girl used to bone each other's girlfriends. <laughs> Are you going out with now? practice sex, sex? Oh, yeah. That was back in the days when you didn't have to worry about that. didn't have to wear a condom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously, you didn't have to worry about that. This girl was sleeping with him, sleeping with me. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Exactly. Then. We may have a lot of things in common. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really you have to get the clinic. Why don't you just go get it? Exactly. Why don't you just go get a test, and then I don't have to go get one? <laughs> I'll get the results for both of us. Sex isn't just, you know, pinned onto music. Anybody has sex. I mean, unless they're, they're celibate by choice of religious aspirations. I think that, you know, to, to say that, that music itself is, you know, synonymous with sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Sure, if you put the rock, rock and roll part on, but what how about, how about sex, drugs, and basketball? You know, I mean, uh, all the stuff that's going on about magic. You know, I mean, it's, it's a tragedy for, for anybody to, to, to acquire the virus. But, uh, you know, that's what uh, being careful is about. You got that bubble in your head, you know, it's all this thing. Save sex, save sex, save sex. And then you see this killer looking girl, it's like, pop, it's gone, you know? Before when I was drinking, you know, it was like the more I drank, the better they look. So it, it, was, it was pretty easy to find an attractive woman. At, at 10, they looked like two, and at two, they were all tens. And I was, I mean, one in the back of the bus is worth two in the venue. You know, so it's like... You're gonna have I to mean, elaborate on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't? You might have to. <laughs> we understand, but... Okay, one girl in the back of the bus, <laughs> playing strip Nintendo or whatever, or hide the salami, is better than another girl sitting inside of the club going like, Oh, wow, you guys are so gnarly, you know? Because when they're in the back of the bus, they're usually naked. For, for me, you know what? I got my own bunk with a reading light, and I go in there and write new songs. <laughs> I mean, you know what? If this album makes us go 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 celibate, I mean, uh, go platinum. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> wait, didn't slip there, huh? If this album makes us go platinum, then then uh, maybe we'll practice a little bit more abstinence and go double platinum. Or, you know. Then on the other hand, if it bombs, you know what we're gonna do? <laughs> Pussy. I don't know if they look at me as a role model. I get a lot of letters, a lot of letters. Most of the letters deal with the problem of teen suicide. So I don't know if it's a responsibility, but yeah, I guess it is a responsibility, but I don't look at it like that. I look at it like, you know, everybody, like if somebody goes and looks at an Axl Rose, they look up at an Axl Rose. This is Axl Rose. He's a huge rock star. And when they see Axl Rose, they'll go, whoa, Axl Rose. But if they see me walking down the street, they'll go, hey, Ricky, what's up? What do you think about the new Guns N' Roses record or something like that? So I think when people write to me, you know, or, or, or talk to me about something, I think they're mostly talking about stuff like, you know, they feel like I'm an equal. Like I'm their brother or something that they could talk to. I wish I had somebody that I could talk to when I was growing up. It would have made things easier.